Hey, it's time for Tech Talk number 19. As 2019 rolls on, we continue to provide all that great information on your home voiceover studios and all related tech with that. And uh, we need your questions. So if you have a question for us, throw it in our chat room. And George, you got lots of cool stuff to talk about, about Catalina. Catalina and software updates and every year about this time of year you'll hear the same thing but there's some twists in catalina you really got to look out for i can't wait to hear about it coming up right now on voiceover body shop tech talk number 19. from the outer reaches they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio and together from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Oh, it's time for Tech Talk. One of our favorite things to do in the entire world. <laughs> and we have about yeah, tech. Yeah, it's. You guys eat this stuff up, you know. This is just George and I talking shop. It's uh we just love talking about it. It's what we know. It's it's great to keep up to date with what's happening. Because, you know, tech is tech. I mean, there's some basic rules to it, but there's always new stuff. Although most of it is new stuff that perhaps you don't need or you need warnings about. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be a lot of a lot of warnings, a lot of reminding you of what you should have known by now, or maybe you just need to be reminded of, uh, but uh, we'll get into that tonight. Absolutely. And we're going to talk a little bit about all the sorts of gear you don't need, because boy, we get a lot of stuff about that. But let's get started with George's tech update for this week. Well... If you use any software or hardware in your studio and you subscribe to said company's mailing lists and you don't have all your emails being filtered out like I do in my Gmail inbox where I never see a newsletter, then maybe by now you've seen an email from one of those companies saying, don't update to Catalina yet. So people going, Catalina, why does he keep talking about a small island 20 mile, 29 miles off the coast of California? Um, Catalina is the new Mac OS version um, that is being launched. I believe today was the day that was the launch date officially. And um, let me just start off by this more generically, not just talking about Catalinas and Macs and everything, but more generically, this is just a, a rule of thumb that, it's a, it's pretty much it's a pretty solid rule. It is it's almost a guarantee this is going to work well for you. Do not update anything unless you have a good reason to do it. Don't update your OS. Don't update your DAW. Don't mess with your software drivers for your Universal Audio Apollo. Just don't do it. Especially if you're going to do it, don't do it at the beginning of your work week or in the middle of your work day. It's just, 
unwise. I'm working on something. I mean, literally, I'm I'm getting ready to go on the air tonight, and one of my long-standing clients saying, "I just installed an update, and now this is broken." And, and I'm like, <laughs> "What are you doing? Why would you do this in the middle of your day?" You know, so if you go, if you if you just gotta have it, you're one of those people. Then you've just got to have another computer that you can use to futz around and experiment with all these new things. But your production computer, the one that you make your money with, the one that has to work every day, every time you hit record, it's just got to be there. That's not one you take chances on you experiment with. So many companies are sending out warnings about the new Catalina OS. What's the Uh, problem with it? Well, I mean, you guys know, I mean, every single year we, we wax on about don't update right away. Give your driver, your hardware companies, your software companies time to test, vet, debug, whatever it is, do updates, whatever they have to do to be working with the new OS. That's, that's not new. That's, that's really this time of year, pretty much every year we have to, we have to do that. Um, but What's going on now is like there's security levels are are increasing with the uh, operating system. So anybody who upgraded to Mojave and even High Sierra before that, you started seeing a lot of error messages when you install software saying maybe this software isn't um, licensed or in some way authorized to install on your Mac. Then you have to go to system preferences, security, go to another thing type in a password, click another button that says open anyway, then go in another place, say yes, allow the microphone to connect, you know, on and on. Well, the new uh, the newest one OS is just kind of taking that to another level. So what's going on now is, um, and there's a good article about this if you really want to get into it, over at pro-tools-expert.com, there's some really good in-depth, super geeky articles about this. Um, but one of the key things that they're talking about is notarization. So the other thing is something called hardened runtime, and it's a set of security requirements controlling how software on the Mac is granted access to your computer. So the short version of all that is, is there's a lot more security now that every single program on your computer, every driver, every plugin, all has to be compliant with in order to be installed on Catalina. So you've got to be really careful um about making that next step to catalina so put it off a little while um you know it's it's i unless i let me know if there are features in catalina that are going to change your your business life and make things faster and more efficient for you as a voice actor i'll be the first one to, to look into it but as far as i know there really aren't anything there really isn't any real game changer tools um so give yourself a little bit of a a head start by not diving in. <laughs> I usually, yeah. yeah. If there's an update, I'm, I'll, I'm like, oh sure, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do it, and I'll, you know, like, I'll do it on my laptop, not my production computer, like you said. And it's like, here's all the changes, and I'm like, I don't use any of this stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's so many new features that are really designed about integrating the iOS with the Mac OS world and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, other companies that are issuing warnings are is Isotope saying we don't recommend it. There's a whole grocery list of companies that have issued warning, warnings about it. So enough about that. Just yeah. don't update in your system. And even folks on Windows, there are occasional Windows updates that get pushed to your machine that do break things. Now, I was under, under the understanding that on Windows Home, you cannot turn off the updates. But I actually got to chat with Jeffrey Kafer last week. He's a Windows user and a heck of a geek himself. And he said, no, 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 it's not true. You can actually turn off the automatic updates in Windows Home. So if you're running a Windows system, I definitely, and you're using that with your recording software, definitely I recommend getting in there and turning off automatic updates. You don't want to walk into your studio the next morning and have a non-functioning system. So that would suck. Be careful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you guys... Uh, You've heard about the Sentence products. We've talked about Mixer Face, the MicPort Pro, and you probably will see an ad for the new MicPort Pro 2, which our sponsor, uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, carries. 
I'm here to say that I have not yet gotten one in my hot little hands to demo. Um, I think they are so, yeah, I think they are so incredibly popular that, you know, maybe they're going out to all the YouTubers first, the big time, you know, the ones with 10,000 subscribers. Um, but I haven't gotten one yet. But anyway, I do have a client who did buy one pretty much right out of the gate. And he's uh, more of a colleague than a client, Jeff Berlin. He's a, he's a real geek like us. He tested this thing alongside some, some really high-end gear that he happens to own. And um, he said this thing, sound quality-wise, absolutely went toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything he owns. Apollos and RME, this and that. And he said this thing was absolutely on par with that. So, you know, this thing, while being a very small portable interface that will plug into Mac, Windows, or uh, iOS devices, Despite its size, it definitely it, it patches packs a big punch in terms of quality. Yeah, certainly a step up from the from the original MicPort Pro, which in its time it was great. Face it, that thing came out. I'm saying almost. I'm saying ten years ago that thing came out. Maybe more. At least, yeah. yeah, maybe twelve. It was the reign and champion in terms of ultra portable interfaces that sounded good. This one just takes that it takes the giant geno genealogy of that and the mixer faces new you know ad converters and preamps and just kind of melds them together and makes a new single channel interface it also has a high pass filter which is really handy um it takes out the rumble and it has a limiter which is a recent yeah. addition that he added right before release and you know if you're doing your setting your levels light right you don't really need a limiter i mean it's you don't, but if you are someone that's having to do a lot of animation and games and things, and you're constantly worried about clipping, it's kind of cool having something to catch those peaks for you and uh, smooth them out. So it's a cool piece. It's the real deal. Yeah. Got a note from Harlan Hogan today because they're running a special on it at voiceover essentials. And, uh, he said, yeah, the limiters are a great thing to have because if you, if you tend to overmodulate or if you're, you're, you, you don't know how to set your levels. Something like that can really save your butt, and uh, the fact that uh, they put it into the uh, the new mic port is is fabulous. Yeah, it's really it's really great. I'm glad they did that. Um, moving on to uh, other devices. So last week I installed a, a new computer in a tiny tiny booth. Um, we were doing a video for ACX University, um, and we were doing like a narrator's like a, a basically an audiobook narrator makeover. We, we whisked in. That's when I got to see Jeffrey um, and PJ Oakland and a few others. And we all sort of had this makeover event. And uh, for her studio, she's a Windows person. So I tried to find a computer that was completely silent. And in, in Mac and in Windows, there are very few options out there in terms of a regular off-the-shelf computer, not something custom-made or made by some website where getting support might be trouble, there actually is a real Windows computer you can buy right now, and it's called the Surface Pro 6. Um, so if you're looking for a fanless PC that you're going to have in your booth to record right next to the mic, um, the Microsoft Surface Pro 6, which I believe now is the 7, I think they just launched the 7, um, is a great choice. Just get the absolute base model. It's like $799. Um, it's got an i5 processor. It's it's perfectly adequate. I think it's got eight gigs of RAM. Um, it's a little down on storage. You know, it only has 128 gigs of storage, but you can buy external USB storage now. That's you know unbelievably inexpensive. A terabyte for about a hundred dollars now. So you know, so solid state that is. So it's very easy to take something like this and affordably make it your studio computer. Um, so this is a cool device and you just plug, you can use Bluetooth or plug a mouse and keyboard into a hub. And it's, it's just a regular old computer at the end of the day with a touchscreen. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Apple, they used to make a fanless computer. It was called the MacBook. Um, it was that little 12 inch MacBook that came out a couple years ago. That was the only truly fanless computer they made. And for some reason they discontinued it. They, uh, they don't have a MacBook fanless computer anymore. So Apple, waiting to see what you come out with. Um, the iPad Pro is a completely fanless device, but it's still running an iOS, not a Mac OS. 
eh, you can you can be pretty productive on it, but it always feels a little like a compromise from a real computer. Yeah, it's hard. It's very difficult to record files and send them places. You know, which is you know what we do as voice actors. A lot of times, it's like you know, if it's like send it to a a link, you know, it's you you can do it. It seems to be a little easier than it used to be. But uh, I'm getting better. Yeah, it used to be you all it didn't have a storage system on it, but now you've got you can do that. So uh, isn't iOS? Uh, there's an iOS 13. This is the first time where the iOS they forked the iOS. They made a split. So there's an iOS for phones. There's an iOS for iPad. Yeah. So now that the iPad version is out, it's become more useful. It can do more things. It has sort of a file structure of sorts where you can find things so it's getting better it really is it still feels like a compromise it's not as productive well i noticed that um, the other day i had to send a graphic somewhere and i was on my phone and i'm like oh i, I can't oh wait a second give me can we access your photos and like oh yeah sure fine and off it went i'm like well that was easy yeah I, yeah now i, I mean we can do that yeah, it's. It, I think if you're on the iPhone, you kind of become used to certain things that's not working. But just try. Uh, you might be surprised. They've baked a lot more functionality into um, iOS now. In terms of upgrading to 13, um, have you done that yet, Dan? Are you running iOS 13? It did it this morning without me asking. Oh, this morning. <laughs> oh, without you asking. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah, no, I woke up and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I guess so. You know, <laughs> it downloads. By well, the thing it'll ask you, it'll keep asking you, and eventually you'll just hit the wrong button and just install it anyway. Right. And you, I, you know, <laughs> if you take care of your stuff and you and you're, you know, you don't leave a lot of a lot of tabs open and stuff like that. Generally, if you do an iOS update on your phone, it it generally doesn't interrupt anything, except for, yeah, I mean, it, forget your phone numbers, or <laughs> it's it's <laughs> just happy. like the desktop. <laughs> Try to avoid installing, you know, 13.0 of the OS. Right. Install the 13.1 or the 13.1.1, the one where they start debugging things. Or yeah. that's, you know, if you can put it off until they've had a bug fix or two, yeah. you're going to be in much better shape. Yeah. Or uh, when we tell you. Yeah, or <laughs> when we tell you. Lastly, just a little side note about, I don't, I try not to single out brands and badmouth them, but there's just one company who, while they make a product that is renowned for for sound quality, um, is not turning out to be great for support, and that's called uh, Antelope Audio. They are, believe it or not, because this name of this country was actually brought up earlier in the show, it's a product made in Bulgaria. And again, hardware, awesome. Sound quality, amazing. But support is definitely not real solid. Um, drivers and software updates are slow to come. And if the product breaks, there is only one service center of all of North America. It happens to be in Burbank. Oh. I happen to also know the company that does it and the guys that fix them. So that's why I know this. Um, and uh, when something goes wrong, they have to send out and wait for a new board, like literally a whole piece that goes inside, a whole new circuit board to be shipped from Bulgaria. So if you're going to rely on products like that, these very high-end esoteric pieces, buy two. Why buy one when you could buy two? Are they less expensive or right. are they expensive units? They're expensive. No. <laughs> Very expensive. Put, puts a kink in that thesis. But I'm telling you, if you, if you are a part of your, if it's part of your, your studio everyday workflow, you need to rely on it and you can't wait two to four weeks for repair, you're going to have to buy two of them. So keep, keep that in mind. Anyway, that's my tech update. Um, in terms of discussion topics, Dan, what do you want to talk about? Oh, well, you, you sort of brought this up when we were talking earlier. Uh, it has to do with gear because we seem to be finding a lot of the email that we get is, I want to get this. I want to get that. I want this bright and shiny thing. I want this thing because that's going to make the difference mm. in my voiceover career, which is complete nonsense. Um, how do we get people to stop doing this? I mean, they, it seems that it's, it's a lot of it is on Facebook and some of the other uh, voiceover forums where everybody is talking about, well, I've got this and it makes me sound great. And we've talked about this before. 
that's fine and dandy. But I think people tend to forget that they're, the quality of their audio is not necessarily what satisfies their ears. Because uh, people are using a lot of stuff that says, oh, I can, I can manipulate the audio this way, or I can clean it up using this. Or if I have a really great mic, it's going to make me sound great. When that's simply not true, usually a great mic is going to cause you more problems because it makes the area that you record in far more susceptible to noise. I mean, you're going to hear everything. So you don't want the most sensitive mic. And we try to break it down for you guys to make it really simple. It's the acoustics of the room. It's mic technique. And it's setting proper levels. The rest of it is all geekery. Uh, I'm not a geek. I won't say that you're a geek, George, because you're really not. You're you just you're knowledgeable about what you do, and but you like you like futzing around with this stuff. I like to geek out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do too. I mean, I, um, I tend to be in some of the analog areas of things that I like to geek geek about. Right. But geeking is my yeah. Go ahead. Here's what I think is the problem. So. If you're in these Facebook groups, there's there's a couple kind of people in there, right? There's there's some that are just genuinely knowledgeable and also happen to be somewhat available and will answer your question mostly right or totally right. Right. Okay. They are unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> there's only very, very few of those. The rest of them are people that are not working, so thereby they are on Facebook. So they have a lot of spare time to just basically hang out there and distract you with information that is not necessarily relevant to what you're doing. Um, and if you're hanging out in any forum or Facebook group, anything that's tech related, guarantee you're going to get misdirected in the, into trying or buying or getting the latest new thing. Because, well, that's what that group is all about. <laughs> you know, those group, they're about comparing, talking about the new thing, getting, trying, gearsluts.com for sure, yeah. one of the worst places for that. But if, you, if you're smart about it and you use these as tools to just dip in, get a graze, get a little bit of information about something you're interested in, they can be useful. Just, just you know, be careful. Don't get sucked up into it. Don't get gas, gear acquisition gear syndrome, syndrome, if you can avoid it. Um, <laughs> If, if it's something that for you is a hobby and you enjoy it, you know, good for you. Yeah. But don't let that distract you from your voice career. Um, I'll even have people hire me to tech support their studio because at the end of the day, they're not booking. And so the first thing they're going to think is my studio must be broken or my, my must be sibilant or that must be noisy. And, you know, sometimes I'll just at the end of that call say, you know what? Everything is fantastic. It's actually now it, it's basically you now that need to take the next level of coaching, you know, and, um, but it's, that happens. Yeah. It's, it's rarely, it's rarely the gear back to your point about uh, uh, being a hobby, you know, being a, being a techno geek is a hobby. It is not a way to make a living. And so again, you don't want to get sucked into that vortex of all this technology because it will, it will distract you. Like you said, the It'll distract you and drain your wallet. <laughs> and, and definitely drain your wallet. And, uh, you know, if you like doing that, that's fine. But voiceover is about performance. Uh, what right. George and I do is show you how to use this stuff because people are making these recommendations, you know, use the Apollo Twin, use this thing. This is the greatest interface ever. Well, what makes it different? Well, it makes it different. I own one. You know, I mean, essentially, that's the, the only difference there. And... None of this stuff is going to work for you if you don't understand what it does, how it does it, and why you would use it in the first place. Having mm -hmm. it is not the same thing as knowing how to use it. So we'll, we'll, we'll drop it there. And if you have any comments on that, we certainly would love to hear from you in our chat room. Uh, plus, if you have any questions for us, uh, we got a couple. We got a long question here that should be fun to follow up on in just a couple of minutes here. But we'd love yep. your home voiceover studio tech questions. Throw them in our chat room, either on our web page or on our Facebook page, and we will get to that question and enlighten you with what we know. And we'll be right yeah, back. Also, if you're yeah. watching the show in post, 
YouTube as well. We yep. do check in on those YouTube comments. Absolutely. Or or write to us at the guys at vobs.tv. Throw that up there, Sue, just so they can see that. It's got to be there somewhere. <laughs> there it is. Right Ta-da. there. <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back after these incredibly important messages. Don't go away. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. Hey, we're here at Dan's workstation to talk about voiceoveressentials.com. That's Harlan Hogan's place to you, because they have a great deal for this week on the amazing Centrance MicPort Pro 2L. The MicPort Pro 2L is the all-new USB mic preamp that makes it easy to record on the go and at home with professional quality. The -the state-of-the-art MicPort Pro 2 turns your phone, tablet, laptop, or desktop into a professional recording studio. Smaller than most microphones, it's feature-rich, easy to use, and travel-friendly. Now you can record directly to your phone or tablet and leave that laptop behind. And for a limited time, get a free VO cap with the purchase of a MicPort Pro 2L. Just add both to your cart and your discount will be automatically deducted. A built-in rechargeable battery sets the MicPort Pro 2L apart from the other portable audio interfaces, making it your ideal companion for the road. Get a free VO cap with your order of a MicPort Pro 2L. For a limited time only, free shipping in the USA. Thanks, Arlen. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Source elements. Know them, love them. Get Source Connect. What else do you need to know? Source Connect is really the tool for connecting to studios around the globe. Um, It is used all over North America. It is used all over Europe. It is used in a lot of other countries. But it, the key thing is it's what the majority of the pro studios are using nowadays to connect to their talent, to do those higher budget, live directed, live recorded sessions. So you definitely need to have this in your tool belt. There's really absolutely no reason not to get at least the demo of it. You can go to source-elements.com, get the 15-day free trial, install it. You know, there's a few steps to install it. There's, you have to get an iLock account. You don't have to have the iLock USB key, but you do need the account. And you have to get all those things up and running. But once you've done that, you're ready to go. And even if it's in trial mode, when that day comes and the client says, do you have Source Connect? You can say yes. You can activate your license on the spot and be ready to go. It's a no-brainer. Have that ready to go. Have that in your toolbox be ready to do those bigger, higher level jobs and be able to tell your agent, yes, I do have Source Connect. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sponsoring us, Source Elements. I'll be right back with tech stuff. Send in your questions. We want them. Be right back. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. And we're back, and uh, we're we're discussing gear because mm-hmm. that's what we do. Because what we do is we there's a couple of things you and I do. We teach people. We teach you how to build a home studio. We help you build a home studio, and then once you have it, we're there to support you. That pretty much describes what we do, doesn't it? Yep, that's in a nutshell. 
So uh, if you want help with your home voiceover studio, one, you can watch this show because, heck, we give away enough information here to, you know, to make a career for some people. Eight and, and a half years of worth of info. You got the time? Go back and start rewatching. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. there. Yeah. If you're not doing voice work, it's, it, it's an entertaining way to spend an hour or 30. Um, but if you want to work with us individually on a one, one-to-one -one basis where we can come to your home or your apartment or, you know, if you're recording out in the field somewhere, uh, we like to get around and, and see what other people are doing. But we like to make sure that you're recording properly. And that's what George and I do. And that's why we're here talking to you about it. If you want to work with us, we got websites. You can contact us. We have scheduling widgets. We got all this stuff. So if you go to George's website, which is georgethe.tech, you can head over there and schedule support. You can check out some articles over there and FAQ. Um, you can also send me audio files for a sound check, which is probably the most high value thing that Dan and I provide is just absolutely objective feedback about the audio you've been sending out. Um, it's all right there. And like I said, I've got the sound check and Dan's got the specimen cup over on his website. And that's homevoiceoverstudio.com. And yeah, I've got the specimen collection cup. A lot of people send me audio. It's been picking up a lot lately uh, for $25. I'll analyze it. Um, but what I don't want is I don't want people analyzing one. I don't want to analyze people's audio. That's been heavily processed because they don't know how to process. They process because they're told to process. And I want to hear the raw sound. George and I both want to hear the raw sound. What is it that, what is the base, the baseline that you're working with? Because don't try to fool us because we'll know it if you add a process. No, <laughs> we'll oh, know yeah. It. oh, yeah. I, it says don't, no, no noise gating here or no noise uh, reduction filters and no compression. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but I thought that's the way you record. But no, it's we want it clean and raw so we know what you're working with so we can get your sound sounding as natural as possible. So uh, check us out. We'll, we'll help you out. That's what we do. Anyway, we got a couple of questions here from our voluminous audience out there. The first yeah, one, the first one is like it, five parts. It, I think it's biblical. It's the five it books of Val, essentially. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, "Hello, fellas. How you doing, Val? Uh, I have located a low electrical hum in my home that is interfering with my recordings. It's a very old fire alarm that's hardwired inside the wall." Now that I've learned that it's there, when I listen and pay attention, I can stand still in that end of the home and hear it. I put my ear to the wall and hear it as well. What should I do? That's what wire axe. cutters are for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hardwired and inside the wall. Wow. Those are the days. We would never do that these days and hardwire something inside the wall without an access hatch or some way to get Absolutely. in there. Um. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you don't own your house, then you're probably not going to hack a hole in the wall and disable it. If but. you do own your house, <laughs> get in there and get that thing out of there. <laughs> it's not going to be that hard. Um, if you if you're renting again, if if that sound is there, you can't move away from it. You can't stop it. If it's just a fixed hum frequency, that's just like a tone, like a sine wave. That's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's really annoying to hear it while you're recording. It's always there. But with the right processing, usually a notch filter, like a parametric equalizer set to that frequency, I'm guessing it's probably 120 hertz. Um, you can dial it out very, very effectively. If it's more complicated than that, a buzz or something with a lot of different frequencies may not be too possible. We would definitely have to hear what that sound is like to give you appropriate you know steps to mitigate it right or, or tell your landlord if it's an apartment you know could you like get rid of this thing and remove it for me uh because it's interfering yeah. with what i'm doing what i mean i've never heard a, a smoke alarm you know or a fire alarm make noise like that you know well, it's not a transformer or something attached to that's it. possible yeah I mean, we we have a fight we have a we have a, a smoke alarm in the house that goes off by itself every now and again and you know it's like <laughs> It's, there's no carbon monoxide. There's no smoke. And I'm thinking it's probably some spider in there smoking. 
going, yeah, this is a quiet place. <laughs> <laughs> it's a spider. <laughs> anyway. Oh uh, okay. Oh, more the, questions the, from Val. Yeah, there's more to his question. He says, also, yeah. comma, I submitted a, a finished audiobook to our good friends at ACX and heard nothing back about whether or not it passed. I guess it did pass because it was published live last Saturday. End of problem. Um, I made sure my noise floor was low enough for them and had them check some samples as well. In my finished files, I did not hear background static noise behind the speaking parts. It is an audiobook. It's all speaking parts. And still yeah. cannot when I listen to these finished lines. I wonder if ACX raised the gain or did something that has made this sound more prominent. It sounds like they did hear it. I don't know. I get confused here. Uh, I am disappointed because I worked hard to make sure I removed the noise. I'm happy with the audio, except with this back static. It ruins it for me. And I assume listeners, ah, okay. he's I, hearing I, it, but they're not hearing it. So it yeah, I made sure my noise floor was low enough for them and had them check the sample. So obviously they approved it. It passed the, uh, the, um, QC. But he's saying, in my finished files, I did not hear a background static noise behind the speaking parts. Does he mean he did hear a background noise? Maybe he did, but yeah. I'm a little confused by the question. Yeah, maybe. Um, ACX definitely applies their own processing algorithm to all the, all the files <laughs> um, before it gets, you know, it gets <laughs> compressed and squished. It's like... Get you got to you know when you go camping and you got to stuff sack your sleeping bag into that sack and you're looking at the sleeping bag and you got the sack and you're going there's no freaking way this is going to fit in there and you push <laughs> and you stuff and you stuff and eventually you get it in there and you're going that's impossible that's basically what Audible does to your wave files uh, before they go up on their server because think about it they've got tens of thousands of audiobooks average probably is an hour ten hours. They can't put large versions of all these files on the servers, and they want people to be able to play them back while they're driving in the car, and they want to download them to their phone, not take up 6, 10 gigabytes. The files are mega compressed, and in that process, it does accentuate some noise sometimes that may not have been noticeable before. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. ACX, they're, uh, I don't know if it's ACX, Audible, both, but the QC is kind of all over the place yeah. um you know the file quality is they're not <clears throat> they're picky sometimes and not picky about other times it's it's kind of hard to suss that out you know but when the file makes it to the finished product and ends up on audible it's a done deal and it's there forever so you do hope it sounds as good as it can yeah it, it, chances are it could be what he's listening to his own playback on it might be some noise there and it may not actually be on the file which is hap which possible. happens yeah. an awful lot. I, I, yeah. When it comes to ACX or some other places, when you submit audio, generally I have been told, and it's borne out to be true, is no news is good news. Unless they get right back to you and say, there's a problem with this, move on to what's next. Makes yeah, a lot yeah. of sense. Well, another part of this question is he kind of outlines what he's using in the studio and he's saying that, like, I bought a flat screen monitor to have in there. It's quieter than his old his old monitor. Um, it's quieter to my ear. But when I look at the metering, the noise floor is exactly the same. And that's another thing about, like, noise. Like, you can have two different noise profiles, you know, that sound audibly different. But then on the meters, they can be the same. And so depending on what's in the noise, whether it's higher frequency stuff versus lower frequency, it may sound a lot louder. Like a white noise has a lot of high frequency, like shh, that kind of thing. If it meters at minus 55, that white noise can be quite prominent. Whereas another kind of tonal noise or room tone might meter at like minus 40, but not sound as loud. Yeah. Because it's, it's under or it's, low frequency. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a really low frequency under under 100 yeah. hertz or 180 hertz or something like that. Right. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's it, noise is really interesting. It's not all, it's not all the same. The meters don't tell the whole story for sure. You do have to rely on your audio, uh, you rely on your ears and your monitoring. And if you can't, then you send that file to us. Let us take a listen. Cause, yeah. uh, 
we're really going to have the ones to we're going to have that objective ear that you need right to be sure what you're sending out sounds the way you think it does yeah we we listen on really good studio monitors we hear exactly what's going on and we know what to listen for we know what to look for and if you really don't understand it i mean if it, obviously val knows a fair amount of things but it sounds like he knows the terminology sure. but not necessarily the finer points of the terminology so yeah, we'd, we'd and, like to hear it yeah i think he's just second guessing what he's doing a lot of the right things he's done a lot of research he's gotten help obviously but he's second guessing it because he's hearing a result that's not what he expected so right um i can understand that val i can yeah. understand the frustration yeah i mean sometimes if you're if you're reading about how to set up a home voiceover studio and and what settings to use i find that to be kind of counterproductive because the end result is what does it sound like and right. if you use certain settings it may not sound good to you uh and the fact is there's yeah. only a couple of settings you should be using in the first place and not i actually did have a client recently say that um he's using like an equalizer right and he's actually eqing by picture or by visual mm -hmm. so he's looking at he's using some kind of a spectrum spectrum analyzer looking at the balance of frequencies and making adjustments based on what he's seeing and that may be logical to some people but to me that it's it doesn't it's just it what you have it? to it has to be done by ear yeah, we, i don't know how else to do it that's right absolutely it has to sound good yeah val you think way too much about this stuff but it's important oh, so computer. we're here to help <laughs> you uh question from get fred's voice uh, he says uh we're getting ready to head south of the winter and my new booth will be a large closet do acoustic blankets work or i can go with the cheap harbor freight moving blankets yes with oh, harbor just, freight <laughs> he just tagged on to the end of that just a minute ago oh there's more in a way the closet won't be stuffed with clothes so ah. it's going to be a closet that is often empty yeah and he's going to be in there so now he's got a mostly empty closet can he get away with just moving blankets well he can yeah. uh, I a mean, lot of them yeah just, just get a lot they're cheap enough i mean that's the greatest thing yeah. about it i've built a lot Layers. of closet studios with harbor freight blankets and people are just thrilled with them uh you know how many layers do you do dan i mean you're probably doing more than one layer oftentimes it, right it depends depends on how much clothing's in a closet um it depends on how big the closet is if it's a big yeah. if it's a big unit if it's a big big size uh, closet i may double up on it you know get a couple of the large 84 by 72 blankets and and just nail them up and maybe leave a little bit of airspace between them let them drape a little bit because that only not only absorbs the sound but it also diffuses it a little bit they're great for for what they are and uh i mean you can get the more expensive ones and those are really good too uh but if you double up for one tenth the price on these on the harbor freight blankets go for it you know it's it's a temporary yeah. situation and when you leave you can wrap your furniture in it so yeah it, it's it, yeah, it's true it solves all sorts of problems i have found that it's surprising that um how i find it really surprising how just adding a second layer of the sound blankets or the moving blankets can make a dramatic difference dramatic, um, in certain yeah. frequencies so you know if in doubt double up you know they are so inexpensive yeah i sometimes i wonder because you know people are like it's got to be dead you don't want it to sound boomy or like a tube or something like that, but you still have to have some bit of liveliness to it. You don't want it sucking all the energy out of your voice. I mean, if you, if you really listen to most voiceover today, it's, it's not, it's not just dead. You know, there's, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, nuance to a voice and sometimes over, over padding a room, we will remove some of that. So yeah i know I, i've when i'm in a really small space there's there's a definitely a trade-off because in order to get rid of as much of the resonance of that room uh as possible then i do have to make it really dead um and it's tough in a really small space we're talking 20 inch deep closet <laughs> you know by six feet by <laughs> yeah and i've <laughs> as of late i've had to deal with several 18 to 22 inch deep closets oh, those, you know, the 18 inch closet with a sliding door that's those are oh, man. it's those better are with the french doors at least you can move the doors out and stuff yeah exactly 
Yeah. Um, a question came in, and thanks to Focus Locus who got my attention there, um, saying, um, I use a USB mic for the time being and am plotting my upgrades. So he's, he's thinking about that up, eventual upgrade. Um, once I obtain an XLR mic, I'm leaning toward a portable digital recorder instead of a big girl interface initially. Um, do either of you have a recommendation? And for what it's worth, the majority of my voiceover dollars have gone to training. Well, so, you know, she, she's being very, um, you know, sensible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good uh, job. Yeah. I don't understand why she would want to go for a portable digital recorder. I find that something like the Zoom is great if you're doing field recording and stuff like that. And it can be used as an interface. Uh, if you have multiple uses for it, I'd say, yeah, th that's okay. But generally, we like to recommend that you use an actual interface or a high-end USB mic. More definitely, probably a, a, a better, a better uh, you know, studio condenser mic. And, yeah. uh, and that, that solves a lot of problems because when you start getting into the, you know, one of the, the, the field recorders, they've got all these settings and little tiny screens and trying to set the levels right. It's not worth it as far as I'm concerned. But. Yeah, they can get really complicated. There's only one self-contained re portable recorder that gets rid of all of the confusion and boils it down to the absolute basics, and that is the one built into the mixer face. Um, the <laughs> mixer face R4. There's a there's a model I can't remember what it's called, but it actually takes a micro SD. Um, I I think it's cool because it doesn't have a screen, right? So there is no menus. Nothing. You put the card in, you press the record button, and that's it. And in terms of having a, a secondary backup, I think that's cool. But recording to a standalone recorder for everything, um, it's going to become cumbersome. You're having to transfer files you know, from the device to a computer to edit and post. Um, if you're wanting to do anything over Skype, Google Voice, any kind of audio connection to the computer for direction or a phone patch that you're gonna have to figure out another way to do that so it's 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 wise because it's it is reliable but other than that that's there's too many other reasons to spend less money for something more reliable like or more convenient like a steinberg ur12 for yeah. under 100 us it's a fantastic device yeah sound quality is great works great well, that's why we're here to make those recommendations. It's like, keep it simple, kids. You know, the other important thing is the idea is not to sound great. For the most part, it's to try and not sound bad. And, <laughs> right. and you're not trying to sound like you're on the radio or you're not trying to sound like you're in that TV commercial. You're trying to sound like the way you should sound. Or what's the whistle acronym, Dan? What it's supposed, supposed to, to sound know like. It's, what it's supposed to sound like, yeah. And if you don't know what that is, we're here to help you with that. That's right. Anyway. All right. Well, we're going to clean things up and uh, sweep this off into the, uh, the sunset right after these messages. Don't go away. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. So, you've thought deeply about it. You've discussed it with friends and family, and you've decided that it is your future. Audiobook narration. 
And the doors to that future swung wide open for you this morning. Registration for the upcoming ACX Masterclass is now open. And there's a happy twist. Register right now, and David and Dan will pay the first $300 of your tuition. No strings attached. That offer is only good through Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Pacific time, so you have to act right now. If building an amazing audiobook narration career is what you dream of, or if your current audiobook narration career isn't all you want it to be, this is your shot. Go to acxmasterclass.com to register for the 2019 ACX Masterclass. That's acxmasterclass.com. Class begins this coming Monday. The $300 tuition payment special offer is only good for the next day or so. Take that step. Walk through those doors and register for this amazing four-week class. Visit acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is, this is Bill, Bill Ragnar, Ragnar, and you're, and you're enjoying in Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. Well, we've done it again. <laughs> we've educated everybody on what they should not do. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes we talk about more about what not to do than what to do. Well, I think that's but valid, though. We do it because we have to. Sorry. That's yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, hey, we got donors, people who are actually contributing to the success of our show, which we really appreciate. Names like? Yeah, we just, just got a donation in from Dwayne DeSalvo. Thank you. Um, Valerie Burgess, Stephanie Sutherland, Shanna Pennington Baird, uh, Antland Productions, Don Griffith, and Harlow Rodriguez. We appreciate it very, very much. Yeah. Hey, we'd like to show you everybody else's booth. Show us your booths. Right. Show us your booths, please. Yeah. Send them Fun. to us. We get to, we get to show off what your place looks like, no matter how lowly it is. Right. We love closets. We <laughs> Well, maybe not that much, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, tonight we have a, a really amazing booth on the top of the uh, Space, Space Needle. Space Needle, yeah. We can actually see Mount Rainier, but that's kind of cool. Um, let's Send see. it in. Yes. Uh, remember, if you want help with your home studio, there's only two places to go. You can go to George over at... George the Tech, or George the Dot Tech, for those short, nerdy domains. I got that one, but georgethetech.com is where all my tech support stuff is. All kinds of things, different ways we can work together. So go give it a look. If you get confused, too many darn options, just send me a message in the contact area. We'll get back to you with what we think would be most helpful for you. Right. And, and if, Dan. Yeah. If George is too busy, uh, which he always is, you can go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and I'll be happy to help you out with your questions, uh, listen to your audio and show you how to do it right so it will sound the way it's supposed to sound like. All righty. Well, we need to thank our sponsors, like uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO-Heroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. And the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live and Recorded Webcasting. Uh, our own Sue Merlino does a great job with our technical direction. 
it's been fabulous here. We, and we appreciate all she does. And of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny and all of you for sending us your questions. Uh, that's going to do it for us this week. Next week, Joe Davis will be with us. Oh, if you've got questions on websites, he knows everything there is to know. CEO. What? Master. He's a master of SEO too. A master. And he stays up to date with it. So make yeah. sure you send in your questions and maybe show us your websites. We'll be thrilled to take a look at that as well. So that's yep. going to do it for us this week. Thanks so much for hanging with us. And uh, well, time to say goodnight. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. Have a great week.